So today's class is called Another Radical Experiment in Empathy. As a Palestinian, right, I want to see, I want you to be able to develop uh, insight into seeing the, this conflict from the perspective, say, like of his parents who both went over and volunteered to support the IDF, okay? I want you to be able to see the path to being here seeing it from a Palestinian perspective, like really seeing it and really feeling it and you really seeing it and feeling it. And for you, Zoe, I want you to be able to hold equally just both perspectives, like really equally. And I know you lean in one direction, but it's really important to lean equal. Okay, that's the experiment. And so what I'm gonna do is very strong, I'm gonna take a very strong position, Palestinian position, and then I'm gonna take or actually, I'm going to start with a very strong Jewish position, and then I'm going to take a very strong, or Israeli position, I should say, then a very strong Palestinian position. And your job is to follow me on this and recognize that I'm taking these positions because this is a college classroom. And the purpose of being in college is to think, and in particular to think in ways that we are not trained to think or ready to think, okay? So just keep that in mind as we move forward. I'm gonna go back and forth. Here, October 6th attacks. So what happened was, periodically, Hamas, and Hamas is, a, is the, the political organization that is in charge in Gaza. And Hamas won elections in 2006. Now, they only got about 42 or maybe 47% of the vote. Um, but they had elections in Gaza, and people were mostly, uh, this is quite well documented, that Palestinians were really voting against the corruption of the other political parties, in particular Fatah. That was, that was in, you know, kind of controlling the West Bank. And the Palestinians, Hamas at that point in time wasn't calling for the end of the state of Israel, the destruction of the state of Israel and killing any and every Jew they can find. But Hamas became that. And once Hamas came into power, there were never any more elections. They got guns and they held things down and Hamas controlled all of Gaza. And they continue to control Gaza, and they control Gaza today. And Hamas, part of their charter, is to destroy Israel. It's you. Your people, your family, anybody who's there, any family you have that's there, destroy them. And if we kill them all, that's fine. But they all need to leave. They, they need to leave Israel because Israel is actually Palestine. And Hamas has been a very violent projected a very violent organization. Now, you could make the argument, it's not difficult to make the argument, I should say to you, that, yeah, I'm going to say this, I'm, I'm going to come back later and I'm going to talk about how you can understand some of the thoughts, desire for violence, if you look at things from their perspective. But right now, I'm not doing that, right? Okay, so, October 6th. So, periodically, Hamas, you know, they smuggle weapons into the into Gaza through underground tunnels from Egypt and so on. And, uh, and then periodically they, they, they lob missiles over into Israel. And sometimes fight, they, different people get, they escape, they get out, and they, and they, you know, they, they're, and they, and they commit terrorist attacks. And I say terrorists because when you have an army, you can call them soldiers. But if you don't have an official army, Israel has an army, so they can call them soldiers, the Israeli soldiers. But Palestine, Palestinians don't have an official army, so they're militants or they're fighters or they're terrorists because they can't call them soldiers because it's not, you could, but we don't. So Hamas, so the Palestinian militants then periodically engage Israelis. And I'm only going to talk about Gaza here. So on October 6th, what they did, they had, they had this plan. It was very well planned out. Man, they broke through all the barriers around Gaza. And trust me, there are many, many barriers around Gaza keeping Palestinians in. And they killed over 1,200, almost 1,300 Israelis. 
on October 6th. They injured thousands. They burned homes. They, they destroyed property. And they took Israeli citizens hostage, like a, a, couple, a couple hundred, I think. But here's the thing. Dude, they slaughtered people. I just said killed. They killed. They slaughtered, man. They fucking slaughtered. Knives and guns and the stories. And they posted videos. And they, they, and they slaughter, man. Like, it's, I can't watch some of the video. I can't watch it. It just, oh, oh. they raped, violently raped so many women. And then after they done finished raping them, they killed them. And they killed them slowly and they killed them fast. They burned people alive. They did things, they committed atrocities that are just like, you, can, you can't even imagine. Okay? Now, a lot of people don't get a sense of this because they don't watch the video and they don't pay attention. So I know there will be some people in this room or maybe people watching are like, oh, we don't really know that that happened. No, listen. No, we do know that it happened. It's pretty clear that it happened. So it was 21 days before Israel decided to invade Gaza. Okay, 21 days. And then we started seeing this pro-Palestinian, anti-Israel movement happen around the world. And this is when at Penn State, feminists against genocide, free Palestine. It's like, dude, what? Wait, what? Feminine? Do you, wait, do you know how many Israeli women were violently by these Palestinian fighters? Like, fe- what kind of feminist are you? Like, holy, what? 15,000 Palestinians killed by Israel and the siege. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. But listen, give it at least a week. Week. Give it a day. Give it two days. Give it a week. Give it two weeks to actually feel the unbelievable heartache, the horror that was experienced by people, these Jewish human beings, before you go out and start like grabbing the flag and supporting Palestine, Palestinians, Hamas. It's like, whoa, give it just a hot minute, man. So, ah, if I'm Jewish, so I'm thinking like, okay, this is what the world's doing. Very, I didn't see lots of people standing up for Jewish people. What I saw was this on college campuses all across the U.S. I saw it in Paris, right away in Paris. All the pro-Palestinian people were coming out into the streets. And I'm like, dude, there was a slaughter just happened. Can you just take 30 seconds to just light a candle for the Jewish victims, but they don't. So if I'm Jewish, I'm like, ah, man, I'm feeling this. And so if I'm this guy, I'm I'm feeling like, yo, ah, so this is what the world thinks about us. Ah, this is it. And I think, well, yeah, actually. So, you know, goes back 2,000 years. People hating Jews and Christians hating Jews. And again, Christians, bro, Don't take this personally, okay? Got it? But it's something all Christian theologians and historians are pretty clear about this. This guy, Martin Luther, if you're a Protestant, you owe your Protestantism to Martin Luther. He's the guy that broke away from the Catholic Church. And he, at the end of his life, he wrote a book on the Jews and their lies. And basically, if you read his book, at the beginning of his life, he was very sort of thoughtful toward Jewish people. But at the end, he hated Jews. And it was like, burn down their synagogues, throw them in prison, burn their holy books, right? Force them into slavery. It's kind of everything that Adolf Hitler did. And then I think, huh, wow, okay. 
if I'm Jewish, I'm thinking, wow, so this is it. And then I think, okay, so here's, the, this is in the Bible. This is, I use the New International Version. So like, okay, you suffered. You brothers and sisters suffered from your own people. The same things those churches suffered from the Jews. The Jews who killed Lord Jesus and the prophets and also drove us out. They displeased God and are hostile to everyone. This is, this is, this is, this is this, you know, look, you can be Christian. You might be Christian. The Christians, like, you'd be like, yeah, but I don't really think that, look, for 2,000 years, this is, this is in the water of Christianity. You don't think about disliking Jews. You just, it's just built, it's just part of it. It's in the ether. And then, you know, the Catholic Church, only in 1965 did the Catholic Church take this out, these statements out of their Easter, Easter service, which is that all Jews in Palestine were responsible for killing Jesus. All Jews currently alive are responsible for killing Jesus. So this guy right here, he's responsible for killing Jesus right here. This guy. He's responsible. God rejected him because he's a Jew. The Catholic Church in 1965, I was five years old, they finally took that out of the teaching, but it doesn't leave people's minds. And then, so then I think, ah, so this is part of this. So if I'm, if I'm Jewish and I look back at how, wow, you didn't even get three weeks. We, the Israeli army, didn't even invade Gaza for three weeks. And the whole world started to develop this hate, just showed their true colors about hating Jews. You didn't see signs going like, hey, oh, prayers to the Jewish victims. Prayers to the Jewish victims. And I support Palestine. At least say that. And then we got, so I think about, ah, Nuremberg rally. 19, these are all Germans. But you know what they were doing on the Sunday before this photo was taken? These are Nazis, right? The Sunday before this photo taken, was taken and the Sunday after this photo was taken, they went to church. They worshiped their Christian God. They worshiped their books of Christianity, which had been telling them that, hey, you know, God doesn't like this guy and his people because for all the reasons, and da-da-da. That's how they could kill six million Jews. That's how they could round up six million Jews and put them in chambers and slaughter them. Because you don't just do that. I can't just tell this guy, like, hey, bro, listen, man. You got to understand that the Swedes, the Swedes, man, they're evil people, and you got to just, like, we're going to have to get rid of them. And, like, he's ne in a thousand years, he wouldn't be convinced. In a million years. But when you build it into the water, when you put it into the water, into the ether, it's not that difficult. How do I understand Israel? How do I understand Jewish people? How do I understand the Israeli response that's happening right now? Okay, but now let me tell you a story. Let me talk to you for a second, bro, Ethan. And let me tell you a story about Palestinians. First off, that's a picture of Gaza. It's just destruction. Dude. The Israelis are, they are bombing the hell out of Gaza. Like they've decided, okay, we're going to retaliate for the slaughter that these Palestinians, these militants did in Israel. We're going to retaliate. But man, we are going to retaliate. And they are retaliating. And it's, it is just, it is a, it's its own version of a massacre. Most of it is from bombs dropping from above. There's some hand-to-hand -hand killing. But it's killing nonetheless. When you see the photos, you don't really understand what that is until you're there. You don't have, you can't know what it's like to, to be in that, to see that, to experience it. You just can't know what it's like unless you're there. Okay? So, bro, I haven't been there, but I've had the experience in two different places in my life. In these photos, 
The top one is in Mosul, Iraq. And the bottom one is in Port-au-Prince, Haiti. And the top one is after ISIS was pushed out of the old city, pushed out of Mosul. ISIS, remember the guys in the first one, the radical Islamic fighters, had decided they were going to build their caliphate state in this region in Iraq, and they're going to start in the city of Mosul. And in order to dislodge them, they basically had to destroy the entire old city of Mosul. And in Port-au-Prince, Haiti, that was after the earthquake in 2010. And, And I was in both places. So this is Haiti. You can't imagine the entire city of Port-au-Prince just being leveled by the earthquake. So I don't know what... I haven't been in Gaza, but I know what it is to walk down the street and everywhere I see, it's destruction and death. Death. Here, let me give you an example. Here's another photo I took. See this? See this right here? That, that was a six-story building. It's pancaked. They call that in an earthquake pancaking. This earthquake happened at 5 o'clock in the afternoon. That building was filled with people. They all died. Boom, 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 boom. And when I was in Haiti, you, you, the smell, you still, it's still there. Their bodies are still in there. And when you walk down the street and you're just like, Oh, man, you'd never want this to happen to anybody. Like, you just, it's, it's horrific. This is an old city. So we were driving in Mosul. And this is a photo that I took. And ISIS soldiers, the militants, what they did, they threw people off the top of this building. And anybody who had, they decided was, needed to die for whatever stupid... They were listening to music. They were smoking cigarettes. They were on the internet. They were out with somebody of the opposite sex at night. Any number of stupid things that these stupid people decided was against Allah's desires. And so they threw them off the top of buildings. People who were gay, or they suspected of being gay. And just to stand at that building, and just hold that. And then everywhere around, everywhere I turned, was destruction. And so when I see this, it's where I go. Man, dudes, Israelis, like supporters of Israel, whatever, like, do you know, do you really understand what's going on here? Like, are, 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 like, are you following this? Like, come on, man, like, you know what I mean? Like, hey, really? I can't hold that. The other thing that people don't really understand about Palestinians and the Palestinian story is the, it's like the, the, the detention centers. You know, the Israelis can just pick up any Palestinian at any moment and just put them in detention, involuntary detention, and just wear for as long as they want doesn't really matter because they just make the rules. And Palestinians don't have any power to stop it. The Israeli, they call it administrative detention. It would turn anybody violent. Then you get the 700,000 settlers, and then you have this like Orwellian system of checkpoints that just are meant to dehumanize and just like really destroy the heart, minds, and souls of the Palestinian people. It's like, man, like, like, so, so, so from, you know, from over here, I'm like, I gotta look at this stuff. And if you're not looking at this stuff, the question is, why aren't you looking at it? Why don't you know that this stuff is happening? The stories that I hear, bro, the stories I hear from West Bank in Gaza, because we work in both places, right? I've been in the West Bank twice. The stories I hear from people of the horrific things, just the, the life, the Palestinian people, the things they experience and have experienced, it's just like, oh my God. Oh. <laughs> 
come on, man. These aren't animals. These are people, you know, you know your, your family, they, they're, they're human beings. Like, come on. Okay, so this guy, his name is Abdullah. That's Lori on the left. We were in Qatar, in Doha, in the souk in Doha. And he was there. We, we were there for a, we convened a conference with part of the United Nations. Nicest guy in the world. He's from Gaza. Palestinian, Gaza. Nicest guy in the world. Oh, my God. Everyone I've ever met in Gaza, nice person in the world. Everyone I've ever met in Israel, nicest people in the world. Just such a nice guy. And here, go to the next slide. We, Lori, my wife, just spearheaded a campaign to raise money to get him and his family, like 17, I think 17 or 18 of them out of Gaza. They raised $80,000. They were all, there were 26 people living in a one-bedroom apartment because of the bombing that was happening. And that's his son. We talked to him on the phone, the little boy, and he's telling my wife, I, hey, Lori, I love you, Lori. You know, you know what I mean? And last week, I had a conversation with an Israeli soldier who was in Gaza two months ago this guy in the world really nice guy I really like this guy and he was in Gaza because he was there because the other members of his unit were called to go into Gaza they didn't have a choice they're called and he said like okay I'm going to go in with you Israelis and Jews I can see Israelis because 25% are Arabs but Jewish Israelis and Jews around the world could you just can you like feel the fear that Jews would have? You can't, people, after that slaughter, people don't, they don't even, can't even take two days to mourn. Can you even imagine, can you imagine 13, can you imagine 1,300, 1,200, we'll say 1,200, that Mexicans, a band of Mexicans, came over from Mexico and they killed, not 1,200, how about 120 Americans. Hell, not even 120. 12 Americans. They slaughtered 12 Americans. And they raped American women and killed them. And then took Americans hostage back into Mexico. The Americans would be demanding that we drop nuclear bombs on Mexico. 12. Now go to 120. Now go to 1,200. And then the rest of the world turns to the Americans. A day later, two days later, and say, yeah, no, not the rest of the world. Protests break out on college campuses in Canada and in Spain and in Venezuela and in Colombia and in Korea and China. All the signs supporting Mexico. It's like... Can you imagine how you would feel like, yeah, the world's against us? Absolutely, the world's against us.